University of Leeds. We are very pleased to have you here at the Faculty of Foreign Languages, not only, not only because some of us as linguists have been, I would say, very much influenced by his writings, especially especially on the use of the web as a language resource and the web as a corpus, but also because his company has been making available language resources for many languages, for many people, which we are currently using with great results, great achievements as translators and as linguists. So I should leave the floor to him and thank him very much for being here today. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much, Maristella, and it's very nice to come to Bari. Um, now, the topic of the whole week's course is semantics, and, um, and semantics means meaning, and usually when you ask people about word meaning, they, they think of one of these, a, a dictionary. I mean, you're, you're all young, so you probably only think of this as something that the teacher thought you ought to buy or something like that and any dictionary you have is probably online or on your phone but um, but the work that goes into these is so what I want to show you today is that these things are still very relevant and the problems that people face when they're writing dictionaries are problems which are quite closely related to the ones that you've talked about you've been hearing about throughout the week but from a different perspective um, and another, another feature of today is that I can't speak Italian, but what I, and it's Friday afternoon, and you've had a long week with lots of technical content, so I can't speak Italian, but I don't think it's very fair to expect you to do lots of work in English. So I'm going to ask you to do the work in Italian, which means I won't understand what you do, but other people will, and you will as a group. Um, what, what, we have in, what we have in the dictionary entry is, um, is a summary of a word's different meanings and behavior. And there's a sort of central question here. I imagine you've been talking about about corpora and databases of naturally occurring language a lot in the week, is that right? Yeah, yes, yes. So, so there's a, a fairly central question, which is how does what you see in here, where somebody, a professional, has thought hard about what the different meanings of a dictionary are, how does that relate to um, how does that relate to what you find in, a t in text? What's, what kind of relationship is it? Um, now, I'm going to show you in a very quick, brief example in English what I will then ask you all to do for Italian. So, um, Here is a dictionary, an online one, because I didn't bring any big, heavy English dictionaries with, with me. Um, let's suppose we look at the English verb expect. What you can see here is that there's... Um, No, that wasn't, no, 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 no I'm sorry, well, engage I was going to do. Let me. So what we immediately see, oh, that's not big enough for you to see, is it? Mm, that's not very helpful. Um, um, I'll, 
Mm. Well, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll read them out. So the first meaning is... Um, so we've got meanings with numbers. Meaning number one is occupy or attract. Meaning num which is... Um, or, or, or occupy or attract somebody's attention. Meaning number two is to participate in something. No, that, that doesn't work. That's, that's wrong. <laughs> and meaning number three is to employ or hire somebody. So that's, that's, the, that's the dictionary account of the word's meaning. Meaning number four with reference to part of a machine, in a car you say, or in machinery, you say gears engage when they go like that. So that's, that's what gears engaging or the clutch engaging on the car means. So that's quite a specific machinery type meaning. Um, and then meaning number five is um, enter into combat with an enemy. If, if, um, if the German armies engaged the Russian armies in the Second World War, that means the armies were now fighting against each other. So we've got five different meanings there. Um, that's what's gone into the dictionary. The exercise that I want you to do for Italian is this. Get some data. Here's some data about the same verb, engage. Um, so this is, this is a, hard, a very hard, this is an impossible task to do in a language that's not your own, which is why I'm asking you to do it in Italian. Um, very lame, or at least one craftsman not engaged at Middlebr Middlesbrough. So when we see the craftsman engaged at Middlesbrough, that's the employment meaning. That's number four from the dictionary we just saw. Um, donations from individual summer billions. It also engages the interest of Mr. Peter Cresswell. So if I engage the interest of someone, interest was given as one of the indicators for the first sense. So I know I've got sense number one there. So what I'm going to ask you to do on paper is to put the sense numbers here. So that's going to be a sense number four, and that's going to be a sense number one. Um, until 1977 was engaged in scientific research and academic pursuits. I think that was a sense number two, though that one's a bit less straightforward. Um, and that's the same meaning as here, whenever the professor is engaged in research. Um, so, have you got, you've got the idea, um, what I'm now going to give you, we're going to do f this first for for Delicato, and this handout has both a, a set of examples. So I, want, I want you to put one of the numbers from the dictionary definition, which um, Maristella very kindly photocopied from me from this, this to here, so we're using a real dictionary today. Uh, so, to, to, so if you can distribute them. So first we'll do Delicato, and then we'll talk about there, and then we're going to do uh, Contare. But we'll do Delicato first, because I think that's, that's, a, that's more of a warm-up one. Um, if, you want to do it, if you want to do it together in twos and threes, that's fine too. You can do it too. You do it too. Have you got to? Oh, yeah. Oh, this, these are examples drawn from the web corpus. Called it 1010. And if you have questions, I'll wander around, so do, do ask me if you're not sure about the task.
Yes, I, I, think you'll, I think you'll need to take the sheets apart so that you can look at the definition at the same definitions at the same time looking at the um, at the examples. I'll give you. You, I think um, there aren't so many examples. I'll give you, I'll give you ten minutes for delicato. So this gives you. I think we have to pull them apart because you. Okay. So this, this shows you example meaning number one, two, three, four, five yes. for delicato. Mm -hmm. So I want you to work out whether one, two, three, or five applies to each of these examples. Is in the in the devoto the devoto dictionary entry for delicato there are five different meanings you can find the numbers one two three four five so I want you to read each of the concordance lines and try and work out whether it's which meaning applies is it a meaning one or two or three or four or five
see. Don't you have a copy? Oh. Well, yeah. And also, if you could give me English glosses. Uh, oh, that one missed out the letter as well. Oh. Sensibilita. And, and English. I'm just something so when I'm talking about it, yeah, I, I've yeah. got an idea. But with, with finesse. Yeah. Understand it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Finesse. Right, so red, red is English, yeah. Um, which, uh, oh, which shows sensibility, yeah. Yes. Um, so, um, firstly, let's, uh, let's see if we... So, everyone has done at least some of them, yeah? Right. Okay, so, um, for the first corpus line, uh, we, where, where the word is actually delicatissima, so we've already got a, a morphological complication. It's not the base form of the word. Um, put your hands up if you thought it was sense one. Hands up if you thought it was sense two. Got one for sense two. You know you're going to have to put your hands up for one. You've got to make a choice here. Hands up for sense three. Right, we've got one for sense three here. Oh, sorry, do you all understand what I'm asking? Hands up for sense four. Right, we've got most for sense four. Hands up for sense five. Okay, so we had, I think we had sort of one, 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 twenty or something like that, didn't we? So that's, that's what we've mainly got there. Um, uh, I won't, um, let's, let's do it for a couple more, because um, the second one, um, essere un problema delicato che divide. Apologies for my Italian accent. Um, who was for sense one on that one? Oh, sense one wasn't very popular, was it? Sense two for that one? Sense three? So we've got a couple for sense three here. Sense four? Again, people like sense four, don't they? <laughs> sense five? Right, so we just had two choices there. Um, Let's try, or we can identify them by the document number on the left-hand column. So um, let's, just, let's just see how much agreement we've got for one more. Um, but, let's, but let's try the last one this, one, this time. So, um, ideale per la remozione della placa e delicato nella... That's enough. So, um, right, now I'll do them in the opposite order to see if that has any effect. The last one, yeah. Sense five for that one? Sense four? Ah, you're in the opposite way round to everyone else. Sense three? Right, good. Sense two? And sense one? Ah. Um, so, uh, what, what are your observations about that task? Any thoughts that you'd like to share about it? Not, There's no complete agreement. There's no complete agreement. That's, in fact, we've got a lot of disagreement. From a pragmatical point of view, some meanings of the same word are more used than others. Yeah, so it's not... It, w w you can't expect the meanings to be equally common. That's not the norm at all. Um, since one had a medium-length definition, Sense to sense four that quite a lot of you liked had about the shortest definition. Maybe you liked it because it was shorter and a bit easier to grasp. Um, so there are also uh, 
because uh, uh, usually the dictionary would aim to put the, the main one at the top, so to have the main one first, but it, maybe they didn't, or maybe that just got too complicated. Um, were there, uh, uh, anyone want to say what, 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 what helps them choose? What sort of things helped you choose which sense to give? The examples we have here. Any other comments on that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, so there's there's lots of information in here, but it's quite it's all packed together, and it's quite hard to sort of work out what what all those different parts are. Um, does it does this make you want to write dictionaries? We had a no here. Anyone else? Does it make you want to write dictionaries? No. <laughs> it kind of shows that what the person writing the dictionary has to do is to take all this stuff, you know, we don't want to say they're all the same meaning, but they're all kind of knitted in together. They're all quite closely related. And the challenge for the person writing the dictionary is to take it apart and to say which the coherent bits are and which bits are separate to which. You'll, you'll be very glad to know that the second part of the afternoon session is not, it's kind of writing a dictionary. It's a similar process, and that's what you're going to be doing before the end of the day. Um, uh, de delicato is an adjective. Um, what usually happens with adjectives are that the different meanings relate to different things that are being modified. So, um, do any of these modify people, usually? Right. You, so you could say that, she, that, that, that she's a delicate, she's a person sensitive and doesn't you know, pays attention to other people's feelings and things like that, yeah. Um, you know, you, so it, it's a feature of adjectives that they're very often, they're different meanings. You can sort, perhaps you don't want to say the adjective's got different meanings, you just want to say that the thing that it's modifying controls how it is interpreted. So all of these, you could say, really a different meaning, it's just interpreted differently if it's a, now, maybe this would be for a, a vase or something like that, or a, or a, um, a, a church. Would, that, would you use that? What, what, what kind of thing would you modify? What, what kind of thing would you modify with this number five? Is that? Are there examples? Um, right. Uh, right. So that so that's going to be small. Ob that's little objects. This one is this. And, and uh, two is people. So, um, with, with adjectives, you, you kind of, it's usually hard to say whether it's really a different meaning or whether it just depends on what we're modifying, and that makes all the difference. Um, with verbs, it's a, a, a different kind of issue, usually, with the with the grammar coming into it much more. Um, so, with that warning that verbs are different to adjectives, we'll, um, I'll give you another 10 minutes to work on contare, the same exercise with contare.
a reputation or something. This one, what did that arc mean? A kind, old means. Oh, so okay, yeah, so that's, well, I won't go back to that. Um, are there any other labels here, just intransitive? Yes, I'm, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that points whole. What's this, a soul? Yes. Yes, yes, we're not. It's not. It's a got all yours already. <laughs> I saw you were speeding ahead oh, there. Oh, but you've got somewhere, nice some one you. slash two. I'm sorry, I love you also. Nice to so? meet you. I'm sorry, I love you also. Nice to meet you, yeah. Now, these are curious, though, uh, about the fact that you can have the same thing as according to my analysis, no uh, examples of bits. Mm. Yeah, that's not, it's not surprising at all if you think this is only a small sample and... Oh, that was just the, the one, just the first, the first twenty. It was not. There was nothing clever about it. I, yeah, yeah. 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 But I suppose that uh, lexicographers don't work as individuals. They work in teams. So yeah. So um, compare and contrast their results and then reach a consensus on what they actually publish. No, no. They, they, there's not enough time for that. They don't have time. The, the, so Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be talking more about how that part of the process works. How did, how did that go? Did you, did you feel it was easy? Uh, quite easy. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> um, I'll show more about the different tools we can do to help that sort of thing shortly. Um, Uses. 
city. And is it the authority meaning? No, no. This is um, not. What's sure. This is um, we think that. Uh, All right. Let me see what it is exactly. Was before is here. Uh, no, the third. I put a estimate. No, you can't. That's it's missing. Right. Okay. My cool points. Which, which, which one? Because it means think. Right. Okay. Okay. Or, also. Or, or think or expect. Yeah. We are confident that. Yeah. This is what she. What is meant. Yeah. We are confident that new development will. Be right. Mm. So this is not there. And it's not that last one. It's not rely on. Um, Exactly, because yeah. uh, uh, rely on is uh, um, count to I rely on you. Okay, so it has its, it has a committed um, um, preposition. It, it sort could of. be more or less this one, count to partire una settimana. I expect to, yes, it could yeah. be, yes, this one. With right. the, oh, when you've got uh, this, this oh, yeah. relative close or yeah. this could be six. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's useful. I'll, I'll do it. Oh! Mm. This is a separate meaning, anyway. Yeah. To hope. Oh yeah. No. It's, it's not. It should be different to. Yes, it's two different meanings. Okay, but it's that one, even though the dictionary. The first example is I rely on you. The mm. second example, I I think I'm living. I'm confident I can live in. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. Any um. Any observations on that? Any comments? My opinion, the different meanings. <laughs> the different meanings are more, more diverse among each other. They are more different among each other, I think. More for this in, word. in contare versus delicato. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. The adjectives often work that they. It feels like it's all roughly the same applied to different things, but verbs, verbs and nouns, um, na nouns quite often have a straightforward difference where it can refer to one kind of thing in the real world or another. Um, and verbs are most complicated, partly because it, very often the, the grammar comes into it. Um, what, what, uh, who, who gave what sense for the second one? Contiamo, contiamo che maturi. Um, sense one? Sense two? Three? One, one vote for three. Two votes for three. Four? And maybe for four. Five? Five, yeah. Six? Right. We, yeah, so. We were, Ma Maristella and I were just, were just puzzling over that one. Um, it's not, the, the, it's not transitive, because it's followed by clause, so it's... That, so that's an argument against, against the first four. Not, not, not a surefire argument, but the lexicographer was trying to tell us that this one is, that these ones are usually transitive. Uh, and sorry, one to three are usually transitive, and four isn't. And I don't think the lexicographer has made any commitment about five and six. Um, when you're writing a dictionary, you don't want to put lots. You don't want to overwhelm the user with too many details. So you often find, you know, these ones. The first ones. That, yeah, n notice a notice a kind of interesting bit of structure that nearly works, but not quite here. The um, the label in the dictionary. For V tr, so that's for a verb transitive, is before any of the entries. So that applies, that, that suggests that it applies to everything, unless it's explicitly contradicted, as it is here, because we know that the verb can't be both transitive and intransitive. So there's a bit of sort of formal structure there with the dictionary editor telling us mainly transitive, but not in this case. And after you've after you've had the 
seeds of doubt sown by this one, you're really left not quite sure whether these ones are meant to be transitive because they're in the overall entry or whether that's kind of been cancelled by this. Um, and in fact, um, if this one is usually with a clause, then it doesn't kind of fit very well and the trans it doesn't really fit the transitive intransitive divide so well. Um, but also Maristella felt that it, it, wasn't, it wasn't really rely on that actually number six has got two different things thrown together. Um, uh, uh, because fare assegnamento doesn't really mean the same as proporsi sperare. So um, one, ex one point of this exercise is probably that you started thinking, well, that definition isn't very clean or there's or, they've, they've, or things have been squeezed together, or they've missed things. Were there observations about, did other people feel that there were, um, feel those sorts of problems, that there were, you know, are there things you'd want to change about the definitions, about the entry, from looking at this little piece of data? I think it can also be um, regional connotated, like to, to tell stupid things. This is this is this one. It's um, it's Devoso from 1971. Um, we also have uh, Maristella and I first first uh, found the entries in this one, and then then Maristella also found 2009 version. So what we're going to do by the end of the afternoon is we're going to see is is you're going to look at more data for Contare and I'm, first I'm going to show you how, how you'll do that and then you're going to do that and then at the end of the day and then you're going to be the lexicographers finding things that need adding or changing in Devoto's definition that you have on paper and then at the end of the day we'll see if Devoto 2009 agrees with the changes you've made so that's, uh, that's the plan um, um, so, so how do people write dictionaries? Um, there are three ways to write a dictionary. Copy, work out what's in your head, or look at the evidence. Um, and the traditional way is looking at what's in your head combined with plenty of copying. Plenty of copying always comes into it because if, you were, if you're writing one dictionary, you're kind of a fool if you don't check what the other dictionaries have said. The biggest problem in writing dictionaries is missing things out. You can think of one meaning for contare, but can you think of the, can you think of the other ones? So the big problem is always missing things out. Um, so it's good to look in other dictionaries because sometimes they'll show you things that you missed. Um, but 
Clearly, copying, you're not going to produce a very original dictionary if you just copy. Um, you're not going to produce a new and better account of the language. So looking in your head is what we all need to do as native speakers to think, is that what the word really means? But what we can do more and more efficiently and more and more effectively as time and technology moves on is we can look at data. Um, people, people have always looked at data for writing dictionaries and um, I visited Zana Kelly a few months ago and they have rooms full of card files which is the data in, used from, a, from, the, from you know, 100 years ago. Over 100 years people have used you know, so pre-computer, people have collected data about a word and have used that as the basis for writing dictionaries. Um, but now we can do it much more effectively because we can, the data is available electronically and we can use tools to look at it electronically uh, and altogether much faster. Um, and what my company does is produce the Sketch Engine, as Maricela already mentioned, which is a corpus tool which has been used for lexicography a lot. Um, so, oh, who's already logged on? I think an email went round. So, have some of you got Sketch Engine accounts? Good. Most no, a few yeses. Um, oh, and also, I now need to move into the technology question. Um, how many of you have got? Uh, how many of you have got laptops or iPads here? Right, that's, that's plenty because we can do it in threes. Um, uh, and have all of you who have them got wireless connect? Are you connected? Can you put your hands up nice and high? Because everyone who hasn't, can they work out who those people are? So after the, um, so, so after the coffee break, or yeah, I think after the coffee break, we'll be. Uh, working in, you'll need, if you haven't got a computer, you'll work, need to work with one of the people with a computer in twos or threes in order to do this exercise. For, so what I'll do up until the coffee break is roughly show you what tools are available for a lexicographer to start looking at, um, to start, you know, in order to find out what's right and what's wrong about those dictionary entries. Um, if I go here, um, I won't use that corpus because it's too old, I'll use the UK WAC corpus. Um, so, so lexicographers who want to use evidence rather than just intuition and copying will use a corpus. And the corpus used to be very hard to collect on lots and lots of index cards that got stored in rooms full of in index cards. But now life is much easier because you can have your corpus on a computer and you can do much, much more with it. So this corpus is um, one, in a, one in a third billion words collected from the web um, by colleagues in Bologna. And um, if we put the verb engage in here, we have 100,000 examples. So we've got lots of data from linguistics being a, a subject where data was kind of quite complicated and hard to get hold of and hard to know what was data. With computers, linguistics has become a, 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 a subject where we've got loads of data. It's wonderful for all sorts of things like this. 100,000 examples of a mid-frequency word. Um, some of the things you can do in the sketch engine, I can, I can say, well, 100,000 is far too many to look through all of them. So if I'm going to look through all of them to try and find out what the recurring patterns are, I might want to take a sample. 
start with a sample of 250. Um, and then a nice thing, if you've got a manageable number, then you can sort them to see what comes after the verb. And very often you get strong patterns that tell you the kinds of things you need to notice about a word. So we can sort like this, sort according to right context. I'm doing, I've, I've got to show you in English because I can't sensibly show you in Italian, but you'll be doing it in Italian. So. Um, these ones here with the, with the um, indefinite article, um, particularly this one, this one, this one, what meaning is that? Is it, can you all read it? Is it big enough? It's always hard getting big enough text with, uh, you know, I want you to be able to read it, and you need to read. You, I need to have quite a lot on the screen. So, so here we've got the um, the employ, employment meaning of engage, which was I think meaning four in Oxford. Oh, and we've got an indication of some recurring pattern here: engage actively. So these are the kind of things the lexicographer is going to be looking out for. That seems like it's. A word that often, that, well, there's not much evidence yet, but engage actively is maybe a collocation, um, and that's going to be um, engage in a participate kind of m meaning. Uh, actually, I need a smaller sample, excuse me, because otherwise I'll be spending ages scrolling. Um, I want you to do these things with Italian, so if I'm going too fast so you can't follow, do slow me down. In fact, this will work better because people work out how to do things if they're actually doing it. Um, so I think we'll move, on. We'll, we'll move on to doing it online. So if you can get in twos and threes so everyone's looking at a computer, and then we'll go through the process of getting everyone hands-on now. So, could you raise your hands again if, you're, if you've got a computer with, which is connected? Okay, um, and can everyone who's not move to sit next to one of those people? Um, it might mean one or two of the people with computers moving, so you can, it should be possible that you can all... It was about half the people have computers, so working in twos and threes. Um, and then for those of you who, I know th three, of you, three or four of you have done this already, but for those who haven't done this already, could you, could you go to sketchengine.co.uk, here, um, also, as, as also on the brochure, sketchengine, all, dot one, all one word, .co.uk and you'll get this have you, all, have you all got that? yep over here there's a button called register up here there's a button called register You're going to be site license members superior to the regular 30-day 30, 30 free trial members. So click the site license member button, this one here.
and fill this in with your details. If you've already, has anyone already had a Sketch Engine account? Those of you who've already had an account won't be able to use the same email again. Unless, so if you have, because it's just for once over. So, but do you, so can you use a different email or I can fix it in the database? Anyone else stuck with that problem? I can give you all, um, anyone who's got an account and wants it extended to take benefit of this, I'm going to give you a 90-day free trial. So anyone who wants me to extend their account to take advantage of that 90-day free trial, let me know and I'll fix it. Um, so fill in these details. And the, the password is going to be emailed to you, so you'll also need to check email. The critical data you won't have is the site license key is lowercase rt, isn't it? Yeah. So the bit of information I need to give you so you can complete the process is the site license key for this box here is lowercase a-r-t-i, who is sponsoring this event. Thank you, RT. And then when you've done that, click on register. always people who have problems. Is everyone all going okay? Anyone stuck? You? Oh, oh you're yeah. used Oh, good. But, uh, we don't have the same dictionary that you have. We, I see UK 1010. Uh, I'll explain about that in a second, okay. yeah. yeah. Um, Oh, hang on. Which ones do you have on that list? What? Which ones do you have on that list? You had um, a British National Corpus. Okay, I'll, I'll go back to the British National Corpus. You okay there? You registered? Is everyone... Are people in the sketch engine yet? You have to go and check your email to find the password. So. And then you also have to... Uh, uh, um, cut, it's best to cut and paste from the email into the password box because it's an impossible thing to remember. Is everyone there? Is, are, are all the computers on the sketch engine? Yeah, you are... Are you on the sketch engine? You are, aren't you? Yeah. Great. Great. You're a really good class. It usually takes much longer than that. Um, so we we'll use the British National Corpus um, because it's already there for, in the... Uh, so when I refer to your home page, this is your... The, your home page, your Sketch Engine home page is this one with the list of Corpora on. Um, and the reason I've got different ones on my list to you is because whichever ones you've used recently go, and go in the top of the list. And if you want one that isn't used recently, there's a button here for Show More Corpora. Um, so, in fact, we might as well just use British National Corpus for, for now. So, so I, I'll change what I said. We, we won't use UK WAC. We'll use British National Corpus because it's already there and is big enough for this exercise. So if you do this... So if, if, if all the computers can kind of follow me so you, you see what I'm doing. And now we're going to put in Engage. And we have a, a mere 4,000 examples, but it'll do. And then we're going to start by, taking a, start by taking a sample of them. So here's the sample button. I think we'll take a sample of just 100. And create the sample.
A couple of other things you can do here. Sometimes you look at the concordance line and you can't, you can't quite work out what's going on. It's a bit too, it's too, it isn't giving you enough information. If you want to, to expand the corpus line to see more, you can click here. Click on the target word and you see more context like that. But what we're going to do now, we want to sort because sorting is, a, is one way of finding the recurring patterns. Lexicographers always finding, is always about finding the regular patterns for a word. And we can sort. Uh, sort on the right context because with verbs in English, it's usually the material that comes to the right of the verb that's more informative. Anything, that, anything you notice on this screen here? So, you see, we've immediately discovered there's a whole f screen full of engage in. So this is clearly one of the patterns that the word occurs in that we should that the dictionary is duty that the dictionary needs to record. So. Um, the, the, when we looked at the when we did the exercise with Italian, we really just talked about meaning, but meaning is a very complex matter, as I think you've been finding out over this week. Um, and one part of meaning that's pretty, so we need to unpick it a bit. And one part of meaning that we can take out and we can get good evidence for is this kind of. Is, is the grammatical patterning, which is kind of one component of meaning, but it's good to take it out because that's, that's what we can really do a lot with. So, um, so we want we want to say something about engaged in. The first few of them seem to be people engaged in. So what, what are the kinds of things that people are engaged in? Activities. Activities, yes. Activities, battles. Um, yeah, we've got another battle here. We've got, oh, we've got two battles of wills. They're engaged in a battle of will there, and they're engaged in a battle of wills there. So um, We've also got more neutral ones, like engaged in agriculture. It's not immediately obvious how engaged in relates to the five different meanings in the Oxford Dictionary that I showed you to start with. When you see engaged in the battle, it's like engaging the enemy. But when you see engaged in activities, it could be employment. There's a, it's, not a, it's not clear how the two relate to each other. That will need further exploring. Lots and lots of engaged in. Um, three, three engaged with here. Any, any thoughts on that process? Doesn't it, want, doesn't it make you want to be a lexicographer even more? That you could spend time looking at this stuff all day. Um, one thing we can do here is we can find the, the method I've, the, the approach I've shown you so far involves looking at lots of concordances and reading them quickly. Another thing we can do is say, can we get the computer to do some summarizing for us? And one way of doing it is this. 
There's a button here called collocations. And on the default settings, on the default settings, this button will look for words, five words, five words to the right, five words to the left of the of the core word, of the main word to see which words come up multiply. I should really do this for all 4,000 rather than just the 100, so let me go back and do that. So I've, I've gone back to the full concordance of 4,000 hits. And now I can find the words for the collocations. So, again, the task is always finding patterns. And here, well, we can see that um, we've got actively up there, and it occurred 54 times. So the hunch that that's, a common, that's pretty common in the context of engage was valid. And um, we've also got activity and activities. And um, does anyone want to hazard a guess about the different categories of word there? Any offers which words are in the same semantic class or grammatical class or, or any other kind of classification? Sorry? Yeah. So, we've, so we're gathering data here that engaging in activities and activity and tasks. Um, and you might also sort of extend that to research, which is a kind of task. That's one category. And there's another category here. Conversation and dialogue mean the same thing. So that's another... That, that's suggesting a different meaning. Engaging in conversation, which is, which is a kind of social activity, so it's, it's a different kind of activity to, to, to engaging in a task. So we've got two different meanings there. And then we've also got another one, which is um, combat and struggle are a very specific sort of task. So there's... We've, we've quickly pulled out three different kinds of engaging in activities, in conversation, and in, in struggles. And that's three, that's three good threads. Um, any comments on that? Any thoughts on that? Thoughts? And, did, and I hope you'll be able to do this with the data for Contare, because that'll be... So I hope you're all paying good attention. Um, we can take this one step further. This, is, this has been looking at all the words um, within a five-word window of the target word. What we can actually say is, what about introducing some grammar in there? One thing, we'd, one thing you might have noticed is that we've got actively and busily there, which are uh, the odd ones out because they're adverbs and the rest are nouns. So couldn't we do something grammatical to say, well, they should be in a separate category? And the answer is we can, and that's what... That's, that produces a word sketch. So we can say, produce a list like this, but do it with some, do it with some grammatical ex intelligence in there, with some grammatical knowledge in there, and then we can do this. Now we've got the word sketch entry form, and we'll do this for engage verb. You all, you all found the word sketch button on the left here. Uh, 
And now we've got something a bit like what we had before, but, sorry, I'll, can I just... Apologies for that. Now, I'm seeing, now I'll be seeing the same thing as you. Before it was um, a bit different. Ah. So now we've got... Can you all see this word sketch? Good. Um, so now we've done quite a lot of what... Now we've, we've got a more... We, now we've got a list quite like what we had before, but a bit more organised grammatically. So we've said these ones are the direct objects of the verb, and these ones are the subject of the verb, and over here we've got the things that we engage in, and here we've got the modifiers, which are the adverbs, with them um, actively being far and away, coming up the top there. And we've got some other grammatical relations as well. So here we've got a corpus, so a word sketch is a corpus summary of a, of a word's behaviour based around a, a summary of its grammar and its collocations. Um, and that's what uh, the customers for the sketch engine include Oxford University Press and Cambridge University Press. I'm trying to get Zanicelli involved in Italy. I have one meeting with them. I'm not sure how it's going. Um, I hope to see them again in a month or two. Um, and uh, so qu quite a lot of the leading dictionary publishers are now using this because they find it's, it's a good way to, you know, the computer's helping them sort out the things that they ought to be putting into the dictionary entry. Almost always, these collocations are indicators of a meaning, and sometimes they're indicators of a meaning that you might have missed otherwise. And you know, in modern dictionary making, we've come to realize how important it is to give the grammatical structures, like the, the with and the on here, as well as, the, um, as, well as just the... You, know, you, can't really, you can't really isolate the meaning of the word from the grammatical patterns that that meaning occurs in. Um, a couple of other things you can do here. Um, there's two, we can sort this in two different ways. We can either sort it, as here, by a statistic that measures the... Um, that's based on the dice coefficient for measuring how, how salient uh, a, a collocation it is where we bear in mind that person has a lower score than defendant because person is, um, is a very, very common word. So although person occurs, although a person engages ten times, whereas the defendant engages only four times, because defendant is a much rarer word in the first place, it gets high salience. You, you've got a choice of sorting by salience or, short, or, or simply sorting by frequency, which is sometimes more useful. So this is the same data, but sorted by frequency. So now, person is the most common subject. Person is almost the most common noun of English, so it's not surprising. Um, questions about that? Uh, the same broad family. It's, um, the basic unit for TFIDF is a document. The basic unit here is a subject or object. It's, it has the same basic effect. Um, so it's for sort of word-word relations rather than word-document relations. So it's more like PMI? Yeah, it's a close relation of PMI. It, we used to use... I can give a whole lecture on why it's better than PMI, but it's the same family, yeah. Any other questions? 
Um, so we can, you can sort it either way. Any time that you're not sure why one of those words is there, you can always click on the number and see the, see the underlying data. Plus. So it's all summaries of the concordance data. If we want to see when children was the subject of engage, we can do it very quickly and immediately. Another thing we can do, I mentioned about clustering the collocations in the earlier list. We can also add some, we can also do some clustering here. One of the, um, one of the small irritations of my life is that everything in the sketch engine is designed to look good on a screen when you're looking at one screen. Everything when I'm up here has to be bigger than that so you can read it. So I'm scrolling this way, scrolling that way. My big fat fingers are hitting the wrong button. <sighs> um, another thing we can do here is clustering. So now we've got a version of the word sketch, but where we've done our best to put words with similar meaning together. So person, man, people, woman, are all the, they're all in one cluster. This one's... The clusters sometimes get it right, sometimes get it wrong. In this case, they've got it completely right. That's a nice cluster semantically, and that's a nice cluster semantically. It's, not, it's often not that good. Um, more questions? I think it is... I think it's the midway point, so we'll... Take a little coffee break, and when you come back, I'd like you to find things, to find problems in the, um, in the uh, Devoto 1971 entry for Contare. So look at, use the methods I've shown you to look at the evidence for Contare in this corpus. a corpus which you'll find in your other corpora list called IT 1010. IT 101010. 10, 10. And it's called, the 1010 bit is because it's in the order of 10 to the power 10 words, which is 10 billion. I think this one's about 2 or 3 billion. And the 10 on the end is because it was collected in 2010. So they're different 10s. The third one's different. Web. We crawl the web to create it, yeah. Um, I can talk as much as you like about that process as well, though I wasn't... Which one? C-O-R-I-S, Corpus dell'Italiano Scritto. You which, haven't got which, access which to group in Bologna, Which group in Bologna was it? I, I, yeah. Is it, is it Silvia, Silvia Bernardini's group? Uh, no, uh, Zampoli, a grouping of Zampoli. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. So... Uh, and that, uh, we uh, haven't, uh, we okay, haven't... Okay, okay, you, you not. As long as it... So, Chorus is not included in Sketch no. Engine. That, that was my question. There, okay, uh, that's it. Fair enough. There's another one which was compiled in Bologna that we do have called ITWAC, which was, which was a web crawled one like ours, okay, but okay. That, that was a different group in Bologna. That's um, instructions are clear? Yes. Right. Time for a coffee break before the serious work.
So now we have Contare to work on in earnest. I'll wander around and um, see if I can... I won't be able to help because it'll be Italian, but I might be able to help with technical things on the sketch engine. How are you doing? Oh, you're not waiting for me, are you? You should be looking at the data yourselves. Oh, oh no, I, I want you to just to get on with it. I want you to look at yeah, to look at concordances and word sketches and so forth. So you so do get on with. Oh, I'm. I, this is this is for you in your groups to find. So that so to repeat the task. Um, so the next 20 minutes, there's no lecture. It's just you're going to... I want you to use the tools that we used before the break for English Engage. I want you to use the same approach for, um, for Italian Contare to find... to explore further how that word behaves, to find things that the dictionary entry... That, sorry, can I just share? That, that the... You know, you might want to um, annotate this dictionary entry to find the things that it, to point to add things that it missed and things where it wasn't clear enough. Um, and um, this dictionary entry has very little about the grammatical patterns, about the, you know, about whether it has minimal information about what's transitive and intransitive. So the task is to find, to find things it's missed, to find things it's got wrong, to find things that aren't clear here by looking at the dictionary, uh, the corpus evidence. I want to start, start with a concordance and sampling the concordance and sorting it to start to see which, wh which common collocations there are that are maybe missed in, in Drivoto. Not understood. Right. My so, English not perfect. So if you, well perhaps if you, maybe the best place to, well is, if you start by Start by so in, input contare. And you'll get very many hits because it's a very big corpus. Just a moment. <coughs> hmm? Just a moment. Because my connection is slow. Oh, uh, well, it's, it's got there. So, you, so you've got 276,000 hits. So you've got lots and lots of data. Um, a good thing to do with first is to, if you sample it down to just a hundred. Okay. Yeah. Um, I can choose uh, 
I can choose a last or I must choose a sample? Oh, it, it's the same procedure. This is just a shortcut that will get you straight to, straight to 100, so that, that, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then if you, if you sort them on right context and then see if there are any words that... Okay, I must sort on the right context. That's, yeah. Oh, I haven't seen, or I haven't really looked at the sketchy engine on iPad yet, so it's interesting, or on, on tablet yet. It's interesting to see, see how it looks. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Oh, so you're, you... Uh, yeah. Our computer is dead. <laughs> oh, right. Dead for lack of power, or...? Uh, uh, okay, right. Um, can you, do you want to join with these guys, or...? or? Okay. Okay. Oh, it's tablets everywhere. Tablets, tablets, tablets. <laughs> and I was just saying to the others, I haven't seen the sketch engine on a tablet before, really, so it's oh, really? exciting. It's, no, it's exciting for me. <laughs> Good. I think, they, I'm not sure whether it looks different, and I'm not sure that's because of what my guys have done or because the tablet knows to make it look different. I think it's probably what my guys have done, but I've just asked them, so... <laughs> So if you, yeah, if you, so it's contact. I tried. I found the PT dictionary. Yeah. But the scope of all this work is to find this association, this number, this line. Well, n now it's now it's more general. Now it's to say, now it's to try and find things in here that are missing here or that are wrong here. So it's. Finding what there is, what you can find out about Contare that Devoto didn't find, really. You see? Uh, no, I don't understand. Well, if you. Um, the, the scope of all this analysis of the world, yeah. which is? Well, the, the point is to produce a better dictionary entry. Ah, okay. So to criticize that on the basis of that, to find. So you'll probably find some. If you find things... combination that don't match with yeah, this uh, description, yeah. but we can improve the dictionary. That's okay. the basic plan, which is quite ambitious. I probably should have narrowed it down more, but I'm sure you can do it. How do you mean? My last question yeah. was... Uh, Right. Okay. Okay. But so that's, is that a good thing to get on with? Good. Uh, we didn't understand uh, what to do. Uh, we have to search, uh, for example, uh, engage, and mm. to extract the, the definitions. Well, to try to find how you could make the dictionary better. I think I'd better announce it again, because they would say, I, I'll, I, I, I can see that this, it, it, <coughs> it, it, I think I should be clearer about, I, I'll, I will try to be clearer about what the task is. I think I need to give, well maybe some of you are getting on fine and some need more direction. So I will, so what, what I want you to do is to find things that are, where Devoto's entry is wrong or missing, um, meanings that are missing or patterns that, he, that are important patterns that are not mentioned and so to look closely at his definition and how it fits the evidence that you have to try and find those gaps and I think I will, I, the, and I was just telling that group there to start with the concordance, but the easiest place to start is really the word sketch. So if you put in... Oh. So if we put in Contare here...
then that then so th these are the words which are statistically now these are the words which are the most salient ones that occur with Contari so they should all be accounted for somehow in the dictionary entry they should be it should be clear how they fit to the structure of the dictionary entry if there are words here which don't have any place in the dictionary entry where, where the meaning that they indicate and the pattern that they indicate is not discussed in the dictionary, that means the dictionary is missing it. Is that...? You got it? Yep, so it's to find those gaps in that dictionary. Dice, it's based on the dice coefficient. Ah, dice. Yeah. Yes. So which this is only the choruses. Th that's simple frequency, yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you two mind if I get those two guys over there to work with the two of you? It would, is it okay if I get those two guys to work with you two? Because I think they're, they're looking a bit like they, um, they would work. Yeah. Oh, it was it was it was these guys here because they they they're computerless. In the do, do you want to go and work with that guy over there? Because then because he's it's better to do it in two, and it's better four is too big really. So twos and threes are better. So if you come round and work, the the, the chat. Oh, did you get your did you get your connection back? All right. Or, or they've got two computers here, so you could hop over and work on that one. Oh, right. If, if you want to work with it, with, anyway, that could, you'll probably get more more out of it if doing that. How are you doing along here? Good place to start. But uh, uh, this is second number. Second number. Uh, what the sense? It's um, it, it's the dice coefficient, which is closely related to PMI, which you might have heard of. So it's it's a way of saying how salient are these two words occurring together. So it's basically comparing how often they occur together with how often each word occurs on its own and um, to come up with so it's it, it's um yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and sometimes it's more useful to use plain frequency that shows you the most common objects but if you want to find the sort of specialist objects that go with that head noun then say that maximum and the minimum value uh, which are well we we've scaled it so that it varies between about 10 and 0 okay. <laughs> or at least it goes negative but we don't show you any negative ones because they're not interesting <laughs> Sorry. Which one? <laughs> Sul? Yes. I said it too loud.
ormai this word by frequency and not yeah that sorting button there changes the, the sorting ah, okay. because i think that in order to find the new meaning maybe we can take account the frequency of word because for example ray word word that of course yeah that, well so yeah. It, sometimes it's one sometimes it's the other no, because no. The, the sometimes yeah <laughs> they, they're both valid yeah okay um, it's, it's, yeah have you you think you found meanings that he missed <laughs> and how would you tackle the problem? Would you look like at the clustering or where would you start? Well, if you start with the word sketch, oh, the, oh you found it, then you can, you, it's, yeah, I think I've um, been a bit too ambitious here. I think it, you, you can then, it's a kind of question saying, well, is that, does circle always, in, it, does circle sort of fit? Do the, does the data for circa, those examples of which there's an awful lot, does it fit one of the definitions, or you know, is it accounted for by that? If, if there's something here that you just look through there and you think, but it's not, it doesn't fit anywhere, then that's something that that's missing. I mean, probably they do. I think there's, I think these entries had a couple of them mentioned circa, didn't they? Um, is there circa? Is circa mentioned in? Is 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 circa mentioned in here at all? In this? Uh, yes, is uh, the meaning number two. Okay, right. So that one's So it's just there. There will probably be some where they don't really fit anywhere. Uh, it's, uh, estimate a quantity. Yeah. Uh, giving oh, uh, so it's estimate. So it's around. It's yeah. approximately. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Uh, I suggest to add. To this uh, meaning number five yeah. uh, arcade. If yeah. 
because it is not used anymore. Yeah. Did you find? You prob have you found any? No, um, not what lines. Nothing. Right. Yeah. We were we were looking also the clustering to see if yeah if it comes up with here, clusters that yeah. Oh, yeah. No, they've got a small number of big clusters. Sometimes it works like that and sometimes it doesn't. Are they reasonably valid, the clusters? I think so. But typically, are like meaning that, meaning that they're already there. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes, can you scroll down? This is, these are the... Or oh, is this this bad word again? Uh, rely on. Oh, okay. So that's already accounted for. Uh, is that an idiom of some sort, or? Count on fingers. Is that count? Is that in the? Um, the first or the second meaning. Uh, so, but maybe, but when you've got something that's quite a distinct phrase on its own, then it really ought to be in the dictionary entry itself, because that's you know, a salient enough piece of the language to include in the dictionary in full. So that's a candidate for something that should be in there that isn't at the moment. Count on your fingers is, in English at least, it's, um, you know, it's quite grammatically anomalous, count on. So it's, it's using a different preposition with a non-obvious meaning. So it's worth including as distinct, you know, as a distinct expression in the, in the dictionary. So it's kind of looking out for things like that. So there's there's one we've got. How are you doing? How how's? Oh, you're on the tree tagger. Yeah. How are you doing? Have you found, found we, we found uh, something we weren't aware of, this collocation with the talk, you know, which is uh, typical sociology of um, politics and tribunal. Uh, to, uh, oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, kind of lobbying for a particular position or... Yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh. No, right. It's just a cluster. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is. So it's one of those words to do with slightly dubious political practices of getting the vote on your side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're not. No, they're all. Yeah. It's just quite a set expression. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, the only meaning we would, so, uh, uh, meaning I would certainly add to the, 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 the meaning of contra, contra as being important because none of those right. yes. would act specifically correspond to the right. importance. Mm. Give authority as much. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. In English, that's uh, someone who counts. In, in, in yeah, I mean, you can also say counts in English. Yeah. He's the guy who really counts. Well, so, and that's in trans. It's kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll carry on round to see whether. How are you, how are you doing? Have you got? Um, you found anything that you want to add? Are there things you...
and we're at the end. But did you, yeah. Were there collocates that, that you found in the word sketch that weren't that this analysis? There's lots of expression. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were checking with the position Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, all the numbers, yeah. 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 Good. How are you doing? You've um you've got distracted uh, a beer there. Yes, yeah, a beer. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine root though. <laughs> root beer. Root beer. Root peroni. It's a good software. Find the uh, really <laughs> Quite Matches specific, word, uh, yeah. specific word. <laughs> Taralli, dietro Taralli. <laughs> Moretto, Moretto. Tibia. Qui c'è la qualche doppia. How are you doing? Right, okay. What is it roughly? What's the meaning? What, what's for, what is Sportelli? Sportelli is the bank. Um, um, where you can take the money from oh. the bank. Oh, yeah. The, the ATM. Or the, oh, yeah. Yeah, ATM. Oh, yeah. So, um, in, this, uh, in this meaning, contact yeah. means uh, money. Right. So, well, what's, the, what's the whole expression mean? Con, contanti preso cliche gotelli? It's always in that same expression, isn't it? Conta, contante preso cliche. Ah, okay. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Very intention. Yeah. That's really nice, yeah. But for me, Oh yeah, yeah. So maybe this meaning is not uh, covered. Right. Mm. It's, it's probably just yeah. I mean, things switch word class quite quite often as they develop a new meaning. It's got a bit of a different syntax. Yeah. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah. I'll um, include that in the list. Did you get online? You did get online. The same. Oh, you're you're working with yeah. Great. How are you? How are you? How are you doing here? Well, we have made a wonderful and extraordinary discovery. Now, oh, okay, just to prove you wrong, uh, because no, you you, you quite rightly pointed out that mm. these two meanings yeah. are yeah. and they should be um, they should be recognised as their difficulty. Yes. However, we have found very example, we have found a collocation with Spera yeah. and discovered that. Uh, they often come together and the 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 uh, phrases. Oh, okay. so it's so and, and, and sometimes, and in this meaning, it is uh, followed by the preposition D. Yeah. Sometimes they go and they go to flight, uh, sperare, anzi, contare e sperare. Contare, anzi, sperare, anzi. So they're very, very similar, and they are together. This and this meaning. Oh, so they go together. Go together. Yeah. Uh, the one was like two. Quali sono le parole che si associano di più con l'altro? Yeah. Era carino fare la prova per scaricare i dati e vedere le frequenze. Ah, okay. Yeah. Because this meaning only 
phrases when they don't occur freely. That's quite a common pattern. Right. Oh yeah, they usually they they've usually generally done a very good job. Yeah. Uh, with Oh, right. Okay, there's one or two others from around the room, so I'll gather it together now. Okay. Okay, I think we'll, um, we'll draw that together now. I've had um, several groups had, had, have things to add to the, um, to the uh, Devoto 1971 meaning. So, um, let's... Uh, uh, oh, this will be a tricky summarising job, um, especially if I can't see because I'm blinded. Um, oh, blackboard will be easier. Is there any chalk, do you think, or is that... Ah, yes. Right, so I don't know how this well this will come up on video, but I think it will be easier to use the lower tech version. Um, who would like to? Who would like to start with something to something to add? Uh, <laughs> Maria. <laughs> uh, so uh, I've found something interesting, properly in the word katsu, <laughs> which is uh, in the. Um, in the table about uh, uh, nouns after the verb, yeah. and uh, this is used typically what, what in the, the, the C-A-double-set-O. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, no, no, C-A-double-set-O. And that is used principally in the pattern non contare un cazzo. Un, and, uh, un, okay. and this is it, means. Is it, uh, is it polite? Yeah. No. no. Uh, how e. can we translate? You You and? You and? Okay, uh -huh, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, um, the meaning here is clearly the fourth in the devoto only. Yeah. But this is not intransitive. Okay. <laughs> this is just only a grammatical aspect. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I With it's, and also if it's a... Um, dictionaries are always constrained by space, or always used to be constrained by space. It's a very fat book. And that's because there's a lot of words in it and a lot of work in it, but, um, but it's still missing an awful lot of things out. Partly because maybe De Votol thought about this but decided there wasn't enough room to fit it in, so we shouldn't hold it against him. But now that we're in an age of electronic dictionaries, you can put a lot more in. So you can put in a lot of phrases that... And it's good to have the phrases in because that's part of the richness of the language. So um, I'll, I'll, that's... Do you, do you want to add something? There's an, another thing, I'm not completely sure about it, but uh, there, are, there was something like um, contare su 15 ettari, which may be something like um, 
on uh, um, 15 acres, like contare count on 15 acres, which maybe means rely on. Yeah. Mm. But at the same time, it's not really rely on, it's just to have something that you can use at, at, to a certain, and uh, that is at your disposal. And right. there's not really this meaning, I cannot, at least, I cannot find it really clearly right. among these yeah. f five meanings. So, I'm not completely sure of that, but... So, what, what? <laughs> well, the, the, I mean, e every word ha is going to have different interpretations, and if you look at, and so it, it's, um, and part of the evidence for why you might want to have it separately is if it's quite a fixed phrase that's pretty common, then even if it's, even if it's within the meaning that's already there, it, it, it's, an, it's an additional fact that both Fact number one is that the word has this meaning, and fact number two is that the word is often used in this expression, and they, they, we'd like to recall them both in the dictionary, so they're both kind of valid perspectives. But, yeah, it's really a subtle difference, but I don't know, that's why well, I'm not completely sure of that. <laughs> Good. I think that the difference is that, for example, if I, uh, if I say, uh, contare um, uh, nel mio giardino conto 15 alberi, I cannot use these trees. But se dico uh, la mia macchina conta 500 cavalli, I actually use these things and they, they, are, they are at my disposal. While the trees are. For example, you thought it was contare su rather than contare followed by the dead object. Contare su. Ah, yes. Contare yeah. su. Yeah. Quello che ti dicevo prima. Yeah. Well, it, I, mean, I personally find uh, have at one's disposal more neutral than rely on, which is mainly positive as a, uh, at a semantic prosody level. And, and there's, there's another possibility too that um, you know, within one meaning you might want to to, to give the phrases that are the standard, um, you know, that are common for that meaning. So they're not, it's not e either it's a distinct meaning or it's a, or, or we shouldn't have it in the dictionary. It can be within that meaning, but it's still a salient phrase to include in the dictionary. Yeah. Okay. So should I move on? Do you do yes. guys got some other? Do, do you want to? Other things to add? Yeah. Okay, I'll pa pass back to. I know those two at the back did. You, you had. Back to. Well, the only thing I was considering uh, from the examples is there's nothing in the dictionary which is equivalent to being important, which is signaled in the table, in the collocation with the tanto, for instance, or uh, in phraseology like non conta tanto. It, which is not, um, which is not exactly having authority or relying on, but it's it's not important. Ciò che conta, what's important, non conta, uh, it's not important. Which is, seems to be absent from the Divotoli definition. I mean, I don't seem to to find an equivalent in those expressed in the dictionary entry. And he do, anybody, do other people agree with that analysis? Well, no, I, that's, I mean... Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, I should say about that, that the, the tendency in dictionaries over the last 30 years as people started using corpora, is to realise the importance of having, fi of 
including an awful lot more fixed rates. So it's kind of what you're, what you're commenting on is part of what's happened since 1971. I'm, in a moment, we'll look at Devolto 2009 to see whether they've made the same change. Did you, did you two have some? No, we just checked another dictionary, which is the Treccani. And there is another meaning, which was, which is? Um, avere un determinato valore numerico, ad esempio, uh, lui col suo stomaco conta per tre, which is not mentioned in the devotoli, so we check this new meaning. Any other comments on that? Did it fit with the things people noticed? But we checked that there, were, there was another preposition in the word sketch, which was per, and we were wondering about the, the, the meaning, and then we checked another. So this is uh, contare per. Thanks. Um, did, did you want to say anything, or should we move on? Or the, and, uh, uh, Okay, and you, you too, because, yeah. Uh. Would you want to point out that one about the ATM? The um, we found that um, here, contare has been used um, as a um, uh, contante that is a synonym of money. So, what was the expression? It was, uh, contante. Contante da uno sportello. What, what's the. Uno sportello automatico, sarebbe in. Però in quel caso. So, yeah, sportello. I, I assume sportello did not exist in 1971. Oh yeah, but the, it didn't exist. Yes, yeah, so so that that's nice because this was this was quite common, wasn't it? There was quite a lot of sportello there, and it it, it doesn't really fit. It because it, it's it's slightly different because it's it, this has been turned into a noun here, but it's um, but it's clearly come from the verb. I think that's right, isn't it? And it's. The form is an ing form. It's the present participle of contare, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a noun which has a completely different meaning. Well, so, I mean, the, the, is, is this a weakness of sketch engine? Is this a, a trap? Well, it's a... Yes, it is, but it's a... It's a um, but it's more than that, because it's a uh, recurring issue in languages is whether to treat participles for all, I think, about all the languages of the world. It, this, apply, this applies to all the European languages and quite a lot of others, that we have participles, present participles, past participles, and they sometimes get used simply as part of regular tenses of verbs, and they sometimes get used as adjectives and sometimes get used as nouns, and they're closely related to each other, and anyone writing a dictionary has a puzzle as to when to include a separate entry for the participle's use as a noun or an adjective. So, um, so it's, you know, it, 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 it's something that exasperates yeah, lexicographers because right. they have to make lots of different... Of, of homonymy here, okay? So uh, two completely different meanings. So it, it's... Constant. Uh, it's cash. It yes, means I mean, cash. It but means it, cash. It, it doesn't mean counting. It means cash. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, it could be. It could. The origin could very yeah. well be from contare. Yeah, because so you can count it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's. Yeah. But, so, okay. 
that, that, uh, that's interesting. I, I yeah. think it's interesting because you've got because sketch engine or any other tool perhaps doesn't have the capacity to disambiguate meaning. It works yeah. on mm -hmm. form rather than meaning, yeah. and therefore mm -hmm. there are some pitfalls you have to deal with. You've got yeah. to mm -hmm. accept. And I and I. Uh, uh, and I, I tear my hair out about participles because, <laughs> because it's so hard to get a, to, to know whether to an analyse them as adjectives, to know whether associated nouns are in a subject relation. There's a, a famous, um, uh, a famous sentence from Chomsky: "Flying planes can be dangerous." And the thing about flying planes can be dangerous is you don't know whether flying planes can be dangerous because they might fall on you, so that means planes that are flying, or whether it's um, being a pilot, flying a plane can be dangerous, and their and uh, flying, is, is, you know, flying has planes as its object. So, um, or visiting relatives is another one. Yeah. Visit, um, so, so in the sketch engine, quite a lot of the time that you find things in the wrong column, in subjects rather than objects, is because of possibles that the system hasn't known whether the and, and there was no way of knowing whether the other than a lot of meaning analysis there's no way of the computer knowing which, what's the subject and what's the object so possibles are yes a whole, whole, whole messy area yeah and do, do you want to add your okay we found an example of uh, the fifth uh, meaning that is um, um, narrare, riferire, raccontare. And uh, here is without an example, so we found an example of that. Mm. We found an example of this meaning that uh, here is not uh, presented. That is uh, narrare, okay, the meaning is narrare, riferire, raccontare, and the example is contare delle balle. That is like uh, invent something uh, not real. Buy yeah, uh, contare delle balle uh, without air. Delle. Delle balle. B A L L. That? Yeah, that's it. Uh, and we think that uh, it could be an idiomatic uh, phrase yeah. because it's uh, the, the the only. Um, uh, we, uh, the, the, the only case that we found uh, contare in that meaning is with uh, the, the word delle balle, the words right. delle balle, yeah. so we thought this could be an idiomatic idiom phrase. So. And that all sounds good, and yours, Sally, you also had a point about the one that you raised earlier, Maristella, about es espere, hope. We discovered that the meaning of proposi sperare is not conveyed uh, by the verb contare on its own, but it's always conveyed in coordinated phrases such as contare e sperare di, okay? Or contare anzi sperare di, okay? So th this is uh, quite, in yeah. quite interesting, I think. So where, so where Devoto had those two apparently different meanings together in sense six, it looks like maybe they sort of did belong together because, it, you know, it, it's more like a phrase with a spari in it, where it's so. So there was something. There was some further specification needed there, something like that. Um, okay, that's um, a good uh, good bit of lexicography being done. Let's ha see how it compares with the, well, with a, 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 devote, a Devoto online entry I found. Um, oh. The bulb. The bulb's gone, or? Or it will just take a moment.
Do I have to do anything? Or just wait? Ah, good. Um, is this different to... I don't think it's been updated, has it? It's been, simply, it's been made more readable. Is this the same five, meeting, five meanings that we had before? So, it's interesting. I, I mentioned about the meta-language of transitive and intransitive, and they've, they've kind of ra rationalised that a bit. So, rather than it being the complex structure where the transitive occurred at the top, they've done a bit of... They've done a bit of making it more readable by repeating this information at all the verbs where all the all the senses where it applies. So a computational linguist has put a bit of work in there to work out what the correct structure is. But um, but this is not a very updated entry. I'm not very impressed by what's happened. I'll just tell you I've got I've got the physical book, so I'll tell you whether it's the same thing here or because also it's not got the. Um, it's lost the examples. The examples are the most useful bit, and they haven't included it in this online version. Which might be... It might be... Um, maybe it's not from the publisher of Devoto, but a, a cheap rip-off website. Uh, the, in, in the 2008 dictionary, um, we start with valutare, and then we've got enunciare, then we've got far rientrare. I'm, af mm. I'm afraid it's beyond my Italian to really work out whether, whether any of these match up. Because what I was hoping was to discover was whether any of these are the ones that have been added. Mm. Oh, the sense, the narare sense. Um, I, think I'm, I think I might have to ask somebody to read out. Would you mind reading out that sense seven here? So it's narare, which we did have before. And you, you, oh, you found an idiomatic use of, narr of that meaning. Do you want to say it out loud? So everyone, where's the, uh, yeah. We got the, the meaning of narrare. It was the fifth, and we got that uh, contare delle balle. Oh, that was this one, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, of course. But what, what does it say there? In, um, there's, yeah. a, there's an, another meaning, the number eight, which is count in the sense of um, the box referee. Count the, the, the boxer on the ground. Oh, right. Yes. And also, can you read the, in Italian, the, read the number seven, see what it says. Okay. Okay. Yes, I'm almost blind. Allora, dire, narrare, raccontare anche con la preposizione. Ah, non cominciamo adesso col Parbison, disse mio padre. Quante volte l'ho sentita contare questa storia? Ginsburg. <ride> contare balle, fandonie, frottole, contare le favole ai bambini. Contare balle, fandonie e frottole is exactly what well, this one here yes oh good so uh, that's the, these all mean um, lying lie so it's selling so lies. we have we have some convergence between what we've found and what the updated devoto found which is quite gratifying isn't it? <laughs> nella forma contarla charlare a lungo e noiosamente oppure darla bere a intendere L'ha contata per quasi due ore, Vorrei con vorresti contarla proprio a me? <laughs> Is that the boxing meaning? Sorry? That's the boxing meaning? No. no oh, it's, it's the same word. Oh, same it's still. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there are No, l'ottavo. At the end there are boxing meaning. Right. It's That's gone up to 12. 12. Yeah. Um, it would. Do people want. 
Maria to read them out? All? All of them? Yes, maybe not all the examples, but just... Yeah, just the meaning rather than the examples. Allora, from the first one or...? Yes, I know. They are the same one. Ah, I, I think they were the same ones to ah. start with. Valutare quantitativamente un insieme attribuendo. Enunciare la serie di numeri. Far rientrare entro un numero determinato. Limitare, lesinare. Come contare i bocconi per la tirchieria. This is new. This is totally new. And, that was, uh, and no one found that one. What does no. it mean roughly? No. I still uh, cannot figure out how to use it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the dictionary? No, this, this meaning. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, to does limit, it, that would be. What, does it give a collocation or an example? Yes, uh, like, uh, uh, no, these are not really. Uh, avere i soldi contati, oh. do, to have do, does an limited Italian speak money. Because then we can find it in the, cor we can see if it's there in the corpus. Uh, it, I, it was there. Uh, I it was, or? It. Yeah. Uh, let's go and check. So this new meaning is, what was the collocate? Uh, what, what? For example, soldi, soldi contati. S-O-L-D. So we can say S, S-O-L-D. D-I. And that should probably find some examples of it. Oh. None. Have I spelled everything right? Um, but the, the soldi is a plural form, so I don't know if that's, that oh, would be oh, the problem. Oh, that would be the problem, yeah. Um. Um, uh, what's the lemma form of soldi? Uh, soldo. S-O-L-D-O. Are these okay. examples? Okay. Mm -hmm. So does uh, that? Not all of them, but some of them. So I soldi si contano sulle dita di una mano. So do you, do you think do you think the new dictionary is right to include that as a definite as a distinct meaning? Mm. Sorry. No. Con. Mm. Soldi is uh, before contare, so should be. Oh, so we want it on the left. Yes. Oh, they're all, those ones are all on the right. Let's. Uh... Mm -hmm. Yes, that, that is. Yeah. Convincing? Yes. yes. Good. And it's a different meaning to the ones we've had before. Is that the meaning? Right. Then, uh, mettere nel conto, comprendere in un conto, conteggiare, considerare. Saranno state un centinaio senza considerare le donne e i bambini. That one is also new, but it was in some sense inside other, other um, meanings. The meaning number two was really broad. It was containing right. a lot of things. But I think yeah. they, they split it up okay, somehow. Yeah. Yes, the, somehow. In, in lexicography, in English, this is called the lumpers versus splitters debate. Um, you can always, there's always people who want to put things together into one big meaning and other people who say, no, 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 it's different, you should give it a different meaning. <laughs> they're called lumpers and splitters. Then the fifth meaning is what we were talking about, avere, poter annoverare, poter vantare, to have, to, to, to have at one's disposal. Oh, yeah. So there okay. is, here there is. Yeah, 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, spe specialmente preceduto da negazione, reputare, stimare, considerare. Non ti contano un fico secco, which is a, 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 a more refined form of the first we, we, right, talk, we have so talked we've got about. Way. Yes, yes, more ele elegant way. Uh, then, uh, dire, narrare, raccontare, we've already talked about it. Uh, nel pugilato in the boxing uh, lection uh, then avere importanza avere un certo peso and this was already in the previous dictionary uh, then fare affidamento confidare with the preposition su on. rely on um, avere intenzione proporsi promettere sperare with preposition di che That's the sperare one. Yes. Also in this case there was there is a splitting between Oh okay. So that was like you said Maristella that it was it mm -hmm. has been split mm -hmm. up now here. Yeah. Because yeah. also in the old dictionary there were those vertical bars and it wasn't clear to me what the semantics of the vertical bar was meant to be. Was it a slightly different meaning or something like that? Conto di partire stasera, contavo che sarei venuto a trovarti domani. Ok. Uh, verificare la propria consistenza numerica ai fini di un confronto o di un bilancio positivo o negativo. Contiamoci per vedere se siamo abbastanza. This is really weird. I don't know. Maybe this is too subtle, in the sense that it's mm. just counting. Counting right. yourself or counting something. Yeah. Are we, are we nearly at the end there, or is there much more? Yeah, no. Okay. Well, I, I'm, I'm rather impressed. There was, there was quite a lot more convergence between what we noticed as missing or needing more analysis and, what, and what's in the dictionary. So we've really done, we really agree. We'll, we'll say, well done, you, you did a good update. <laughs> um, where... We're just about at the end now. One, um, one completely different thing I wanted to mention is this. Um, is the... Wake up. Is, the is, is when you go to your home page, you see different... There's, there's this first table, which is what we worked from, and either it's the short version or the show more corpora full version. But then there's also this category of my corpora. And one thing you can do in the sketch engine is you can, if you've already got a corpus on your computer that you want to look at further, you can upload it into the sketch engine. It goes onto our server and then and gets indexed and you can look at it on our server. Or also this other function, and that's, that's under the Create Corpus button there, but also this function called Web Bootcat, which is for building your own corpus. Um, we've mentioned the Bologna group and Silvia Bernardini a few times, so this was based on her and Marco Baroni's idea that we can, we can generate, we can produce corpora from the web by sending search terms to query engines and then gathering the pages that the query engine finds. So that might be, that's something that you might want to explore. If I'd had another hour, I would have shown it to you and demoed it and got you to do it. But I think we spent the time well getting deeply immersed in lexicography today. Um, any of you who, um, I, I think in your email you all have the, for those of you who haven't got your own accounts yet, I think in email you have the instructions of how to go and find, uh, uh, to do what people were doing, people who had computers here were doing today, which is to, to set up your own account, which will give you a 90 day free trial so that you can sort of explore the things I've talked about further and, um, and, then, uh, and, and, and then, then you have to pay if you want to extend after that. Um, apart from that, I think we're around about at ending time, so. Um, You've been a very nice group to work with. I'm, I'm, um, I think uh, 
We, I've, I've, uh, I hope I've given a convincing account of Italian lexicography, despite speaking not a word of Italian. <laughs> and um, I'm wishing, wishing you all the best. So thank you very much for the invitation to Artie and, and the hosts. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so this ends up our workshop on semantics uh, and it is ending in the best way possible. And I thank you all for coming here uh, all these days and also for the people that came on only today, I thank you all. And uh, I don't know, um, we, we, we as Question Cube and also as, as uh, PhD students and researchers at the University of Bari are working quite hard on, on this kind of topics. Maybe um, merging the, and working together with linguists and with uh, uh, other kind of uh, people from, that can bring uh, ideas from uh, different contexts and different, uh, um, different domains from ours uh, can, is interesting and uh, I think this could, could have been a good, it has been a good opportunity for doing so, but uh, uh, we can continue on this way and maybe try to collaborate all together. And um, yes, that's it. Thank you all. I, I mean, I'm not sure that it's for me to say, but I think we should say a particular thank you to our two organisers who I know put lots and lots of work into bringing this week together. I'm not sure if it's been said yet, but anyway, so, so thank you.